Hello, my name is Virginia Nagarajan, and today I'm going to teach you how to code a skip number in Java. Now, skip number is super easy in Java, and um, if you don't know what a skip number is, I'm going to explain that. But first, we need to open, I'm using REPL as my IDE for Java. So we're going to open up Java, and we'll call it Skippy. So oh, a skip number is allows you, it's going to run through a minimum and a maximum in every number in it. If the number uh, is divisible by the skip number, it'll basically skip that number. Kind of self-explanatory, but uh, we're going to do pretty much most of our code in this public static void, this class main inside here but we will do something that will not be in there and that will be importing a we're importing java dot util dot scanner now you can import all of it using the star but i'm just going to import scanner because that's all we need to import yep. so we're going to create a system dot out dot print we're not printing ln and you might be wondering why we're not doing print ln well ln will create a new line so in our input we'll type our answer a line above we'll tell us skip our or we'll print will allow us to do will be right next to the question so our question is enter the skip number Now, if when we're uh, now this was the basic, I'm gonna do a basic version where the minimum is zero and the maximum is ten. Just gonna go through every single value. Then we'll do print ln when there are other questions, the minimum and the maximum. Right now we're showing the minimum and the maximum is one and ten, and I'm gonna build off of that and show. You. So our scanner, we're gonna call this scanner. SC for scanner and the way you do a scanner is you name your scanner variable scanner SC and you do new scanner parentheses system dot in now this is just and then you put your semicolon of course. this is how you create the scanner but you can't actually type anything because we haven't actually read the scanner. We can't write, we can't read without defining what type. Well, a skip number is going to be an integer. So we're going to do int, and we're going to, let's call this variable s for skip number. So we'll do int s equals sc dot next int. And if I wonder why we just not, just do just not next, sc dot next. We do next int because it's reading an integer. Next is just a string. Okay? So it's not that difficult. We've already finished our input. So what let's, let's run over this code one more time. We have system.print enter the skip number. Now I'm gonna do a little space here so we can have some type. Then we have a variable called sc, which is a scanner. Scanner is like an input. And it's a new scanner, and we're doing new scanner parentheses system dot in. But the scanner won't actually work unless we do our, unless we define what type it should be and how to read it and how to write and all that stuff. This is actually where the value of the scanner will be stored. And that's really important. We need this in S sto will store the value of what they type in the scanner. And we're making an integer because it's a skip number and then we do sc because that's our scanner and we do dot next int because we're doing an integer okay and that's pretty much our um code for our input now we're going to define min and max so if you want if you ever need to look at the code it's probably going to be all on this page and you can always pause it run back and run forth if you miss something or you can just look at these head things I'm gonna type in this is going to be skip 
in blood. Okay. Then what we're going to do is our min and max, we're just going to define them with integers. So in uh, our first integer, we're going to call i. Now, because we're going to use a while loop, and i is called iterator, because it's going to change. So i is actually going to change. Not only is it the minimum, but it's also going to change. So our minimum, we're just going to say is 1 for now. And we'll say int m for max is going to be 10. Now, later, we're going to change these into inputs, but I want to focus on... Because the input isn't the main part. This focuses on two things. Why loops in Java and if statements in Java. And in our if statements, we're going to first focus on something called modulo, which I'm going to go over. So we already have our minimum and our maximum. We're making where int i is equal to 1. You can name it anything. And then our maximum, we're going to call m. Int m equals 10. Then what we're going to do is now here is pretty much our main code. It is going to be a while loop. Okay, a while loop. So when you're doing a while loop, you do while, then you do a parentheses. Inside your parentheses, that's your condition. That's your what this will run unless this. So while i is less than or equal to 10. So when i is less than or equal to 10, you run this loop. If it's greater than 10, you stop. That's pretty simple, right? So while i is less than or equal to 10, run this loop. So what is this loop actually going to do? Well, this loop will do two things. It's going to first check if it's divisible by the skip number. Then it's going to print it. But if it's divisible by the skip number, it's not going to print it. So all that's actually going to be in this loop is going to be some if statements and then i++. plus plus. So inside our if, we're going to do our condition. Now our condition is if i modulus s equal equals zero system and so you print dot out dot print ln just that because wait let's run through what our if statement says if i i which is right now one and it's modulus s equal equals zero this means if the re i divided by s the remainder of i divided by s is equal to zero then now why does this work well if i if the remainder between i and s is zero it means they're divisible i is divisible by s but if it's not divisible we want to print out the number We want to print out a uh, system dot out dot print ln. We're going to print i. But you're probably wondering right now, i is always going to be one. It'll never change. Well, that's where you're wrong. We just want to call i plus plus. So let's run through this code one more time. Okay, so let's go through our skip input. Now this is where we our scanner, where we are going to do our figuring out what s is. So we do our system dot out dot print, not print ln, print, enter skip number, and there's gonna be a space between the quotation and the last word. Then we have something called scanner sc. Now this is a variable and sc is equal to new scanner from the system dot in now this is just pretty much exactly how you create a scanner just do that but to store the value of what they type in we do int s equals sc dot next in now we did int and next int because s is going to be an integer okay then we're having our min and max now you can make this inputs by using kind of like the same process here and the same process but we're going to make it one and ten for now and yeah then we have a while loop. Now, while i is less than or equal to 10, basically when i is either bet is the min between the minimum and the maximum, inclusive, run the loop. 
And if i is divisible by s, which is the skip number, if i is divisible by the skip number, then you don't want to print anything. We're just printing quotations with nothing in it. But if it's not divisible, we're just printing, we're just printing the number i. And every time this loop is run, we're adding i by 1. So when i is 11, this is actually, this loop is not going to run. Now let's test our code out. So the first is going to ask us for our skip number. Now Java and Rep will take some time to load. But yeah, enter the skip number. Now let's just make this simple. We'll make our skip number 3. As you notice, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. Now, there's little spaces in between where the numbers should go. Now, you're probably wondering, how do I get rid of those spaces? I don't like those spaces. You bully me. I don't like those spaces. Now, some of you might be wondering, all this does is take a little simple fix. If i is not divisible, now we did i modulus not equal zero. Now, this means if i modulo, I modulo s, so i modulo s not equal zero as exclamation mark equal sign zero. Now what does that mean? Well that means hey if i modulo s not equal zero, that means the remainder is not zero of it. So if the modulo modulo of so i modulo s not equal zero. Then we want to print out i. You're probably wondering why are we doing that? Well, if it's not equal to zero, that means it's not divisible, which mean which means that means we have to print out i. Now, if if it is divisible, which would which we would change is we can put our quotations here. But with the exact same problem. All we need to do is take out the self statement and watch what happens. We're going to do the skip number 3 one again. 1, 2, 4, because three, 3 is divisible by 3, of course. 5, 6 is divisible by 3. 7, 8, skip 9, because 9 is divisible by 3. 10. Let's run through the code one more time. Okay, so we have a skip input. Now, this is, it inputs your skip number. You do the system.out.print, enter skip number. That's pretty, that's pretty pretty much self-explanatory, it just prints. Then, or we have a variable called scanner sc, which equals new scanner, parenthesis system dot in. Then our int s equals sc dot next int stores the value. Now we have our minimum and our maximum. You can change this and, and our maximum both into inputs. Okay? You can change both of them into inputs. If you change both of them into inputs, it's just making this print a print ln, just so you know. Then we have our while loop. While i is less than or equal to 10, which means while or, if you want to make this better, while i is less than or equal to m. So while i is less than or equal to the maximum, which means while i is between 1 and 10 or between i and m, inclusive. Run the loop. If i modulus s not equal 0, this means if i is divi if i is not divisible by s. The remainder between i and s is not zero. Print the number because it's not divisible. Else, do nothing. That's why there's no else statement. Because if there is, what would we put there? So we don't have an else statement, and then we do i plus plus. Remember, always put your semicolons. So that'll be it for the video. Uh, you can change i and m into inputs if you want. Uh, try not doing exactly what I did, but try making a better, like me, I and M inputs, or maybe doing it so that you can have more than one skip number, or you can turn this into a fizzbuzz by using four loops. I don't know. But, um, well, bye, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to consider subscribing, hit the subscribe, and yeah, bye.